Commence by praising and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sending salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by exalting and glorifying Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala beloved brothers and sisters walhamdulillah today insha'Allah ta'ala we resume with our class on marriage and today we're going to be looking at specifically insha'Allah ta'ala um, the love language of quality time and this love language again we're going through uh, various resources insha'Allah ta'ala the primary source the five love languages of Dr. Chapman um, we're going through the fragile vessel we're going through different uh, resources inshallah ta'ala to be able to produce mashallah um, what we're giving to you and delivering to you um, information that we hope is going to be beneficial in helping to produce better marriages inshallah ta'ala um, produce marriages to come in the future for those who are looking for marriage and you know I want to put uh, something out there um, you know today I was in the group and, and I posted the class and someone mentioned this is a great class for young people and I had to correct the brother and I said this class is for young and old just because we have reached a certain age it doesn't mean that we have mastered relationship relationships it doesn't mean that we have mastered the techniques of marriage. It doesn't mean that we have mastered these concepts and that we're implementing them. But we find elderly people, you know what I mean, middle-aged people suffering just as much, if not equally, um, as young people as well. So this is for both. It's for the young, it's for the middle ages, it's for the old, it's for the new Muslim, it's for the born Muslim, it's for the married, it's for the unmarried, inshallah ta'ala. You know, this contains, this information contains benefit for all of those levels of individuals and people, inshallah ta'ala. And Dr. Chapman, he begins talking to us specifically about this love languages, which is number two in his book, Quality Time. And he states that by quality time, that this quality time means to give your spouse your undivided attention. You heard me? to give your spouse undivided attention. Now, what is undivided attention, right? He says quality time is not sitting on the couch watching television together, right? When you watch TV together, he says, the TV is the one that has your attention and not your spouse. And SubhanAllah, I can tell you I've been guilty of this, right? I, many of us, I'm sure, are guilty of this that, you know, the spouse complains, you know, we don't spend time together. And you say, well, you know, we were just downstairs for an hour, two hours, we watched the movie together. What do you mean we didn't spend time together, right? And this is something that has been said by many and heard by many, subhanahu rabbil alim, as I've heard it <laughs> being said to me, right? So, you know, quality time he's seeing, seeing here is not sitting on the couch watching the TV, right? And thinking that that time that you have spent with your spouse or that time that you spent watching the movie is quality time, that it was time well spent with your spouse, with your loved ones. He says, and then the same goes for our children, right? That quality time isn't quality time sitting and watching TV with your children, but quality time is something very different, right? He said, quality time is about sitting with one another, right? Giving each other your undivided attention. Okay, it's about sitting with each other and giving each other your undivided attention, right? It's about taking a walk together, sitting on the balcony together. It's about going out to eat, having dinner together, right? And that while you're doing all of these things that you're talking, 
and listening to one another, right? If you remember in the very beginning, for those of you who are married in your relationships and getting to know one another, you spent hours on the phone and you talked to one another, right? It's about those moments and those, uh, th those quality moments that you've created in the very beginning that you need to continue to create throughout your relationship. And Dr. Chapman, he states that when he says, he said, when I sit on the couch with my wife, he says, and I give her 20 minutes of my undivided attention and she does the same for me. He says, we are giving each other 20 minutes of life, right? Look how beautiful that is, right? He says, when I give her 20 minutes of my time and she does the same for me, undivided attention, not sitting and watching TV, right? Not sitting and being on the gram or on Facebook and shallow Tala, but sitting with one another dialoguing and talking, right? That's quality time. He says, we have given each other 20 minutes of life. He says, we will never have those 20 minutes again ever in our life, right? Those 20 minutes that you spent, that half an hour that you spent, you can never regain that back, right? Alhamdulillah. But those 20 minutes or half hour, that was spent well. That was spent beautifully, mashallah. Rather than having 20 minutes or half an hour where you're together in the same space, but really you're not present with one another, right? That is 20 minutes or a half an hour that has been lost, right? He says, and in that, those 20 minutes, he says, we are giving our lives to one another, subhanAllah. We are giving our lives to one another because we're sharing moments together, inshallah ta'ala. And I think that this is why, subhanAllah, the older times, right? Maybe the times of our parents, some of us and our grandparents, right? And for, for the younger generation, your grandparents and your great grandparents and shalatala, that those times were very different, right? Because they did not have many distractions. They didn't have TVs in the home. They didn't have phones and internet, right? So they spent quality time as family together, subhanAllah. Whereas in today's day and time, we are distracted by so many things, right? These things are attractive to us, but they distract us so much. And then we wonder, why we have so much problems or why we have so many problems in our relationships, right? Either in our marriages, with our spouses or other than them, subhanAllah, right? But it is because we are so distracted with everything that we have present in front of us. And we have to remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would give his wives quality time. He would visit them, right? Because the day belongs to the woman, right? If you had more than one wife. And during his time, he had more than one wife. The day belongs to the woman. And he would go and visit them, even though he was the busiest man on the face of the earth, subhanAllah, right? He was dealing with government. He was dealing with the believers. He was dealing with problems. He was dealing with justice in court, right? And all, everything that you can imagine, it was on his shoulders, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon him, right? Even to show us and demonstrate that he used to spend quality time Right? Or he used to make quality moments. Let me say that's better. He used to make quality moments with his spouse that we see that Aisha radiallahu anha during an expedition one time that the Prophet وسلم, he told the men, go, go ahead, inshallah, ta'ala, go in front, right? Taqaddam, go in front ahead of us, inshallah. And then he told Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, let's race, right? And a race here, I'm talking about a race, a foot race, right? SubhanAllah, to run. And that he began to race with Aisha radiallahu anha and he beat her, right? And you can imagine they're laughing together, they're running together, he beat her and he turns to her and he says, this one is for that one, right? Because he had raised her when she was much younger, she was lighter, right? Now she was a little bit older, she was a little bit more heavy set, right? And she had beat him the first time. So he says, this one is for that one, subhanAllah, right? Creating a quality moment with her that not only resided in the hearts of Aisha radiallahu anha and in her mind, but mashallah has been shared throughout centuries, all right, and time with believers who come afterwards, with you and I today, subhanAllah. This cherished moment by her. You have that moment, subhanAllah, where she comes and she sees the Abyssinians playing in the masjid, sword playing, sword fighting in the masjid. They're, they're playing, practicing. And she places her shoulder, her head, on the shoulder of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And he lets her watch for a while. And then he looks at her and he says, 
have you had enough? And she says, no, not yet, Ya Rasulullah. And he lets her have another longer while to be on his shoulder, looking at the men playing with the swords, inshallah ta'ala. He says, have you had enough? She's like, no, not yet. And then at the third instance, he says, have you had enough? And she says, yes. And, and, and the recounting of this story wasn't that she wanted to watch the men play with the swords or practice with their swords in the masjid, but it was that quality moment that she was creating with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That moment where she had her cheek, her chin next to his, subhanAllah, resting her head on his blessed shoulder, subhanAllah, and her creating that moment and him allowing that moment to be created rather than saying, khalas, it's enough you know, go, right? No, he allowed her to have that moment, subhanAllah, creating that moment that was quality and rememberable, right? And never, and, and unforgettable, subhanAllah, right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mashallah, we know that it was from his sunnah, it was from his way, from his method that he created quality moments with his spouses that they remembered. And we know that because they have been shared with us even up until today. And we need to remember that quality time may not be everyone's love language, right? We, we've been speaking about, you know, you having your love tank and filling that love tank, inshallah ta'ala. We've been talking about how people have different love languages. We talked about right, the words of affirmation, which was love language number one. Now we're talking about quality, quality time, which is love language number two. And we've spoken about how everyone has a different love language and maybe this may be your spouse's love language and it may not be but we have to inshallah to figure out what that love language is so that we can communicate in the language that they understand right and he says here that quality time is about doing something with your spouse that they absolutely love to do even though you yourself may not like it right you may not be fond of doing that thing, but you know that it makes your spouse completely happy to do that thing. So you, subhanAllah, right? Say, honey, baby, sweetheart, habibi, right? I want to do X, Y, and Z with you because I know that you enjoy doing it, right? And this, he says, is an expression that says, I love you, subhanAllah, right? This is an expression that says, I love you because I want to spend time with you the way you love to spend time, right? And I'm here doing this with you because I know that you love it. And if you love it, then I love it because I love you, right? SubhanAllah, beautiful, Allahu Akbar, right? We can't, brothers and sisters, get caught up working, 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 working. When we work so much that we have no time for our spouses or our families, right? We chalk it up sometimes, right? Saying we work so much and we chalk it up sometimes to saying, I'm building a future for us, right? And Dr. Chapman, he makes a, a, such a beautiful point here in, in, in this part of, of, of the chapter. He says, you know, in you building that future for your family, are you really trying to include your family in that future, right? Because sometimes all we have is the right now, the moment. We don't know if our spouses are going to make it 25 years, 30 years, right? If they're going to live that long. We don't know if our families are going to live that long. But we do know we have today. We do know that maybe we have tomorrow. Allah knows best, right? That we should take advantage of what we have in front of us because sometimes in building the future, we lose the present. SubhanAllah. Sometimes in building the future, we lose the present. And we don't want to lose the present because sometimes if we are working so much and the love language of your spouse is quality time, then your spouse may feel and may think that you don't love them. Why? Because it seems like you just prefer to be at work all of the time. Maybe for your spouse, inshallah ta'ala, it is not all about the money. Maybe for your spouse, it is about spending that time with you, inshallah ta'ala, and not getting caught up in having the money to buy things. Why? Because again, it's about creating unforgettable moments, right? Those are the moments that reside in the heart and the soul of human beings. That is what makes us happy, inshallah ta'ala, ultimately. That is the love that we keep with ourselves. As we see Aisha, sallallahu anha, recounting that love by the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa for her in those moments and sharing them with us as well. Bismillah. 
So when you are gone and no longer on this earth, your spouse is not going to remember how much you worked. They're not going to remember how hard you worked, right? But they are going to remember the long conversations that you had at night with one another. They're going to remember the sunsets that you sat down and watched together. They're going to remember the strolls and the walks you took together where you conversed and mashallah tried to exercise and remain, you know, live a healthy life with one another. They're going to remember the vacations that you took together. They're going to remember the dinners, that the date nights that you took and you went out, right? And all the time they enjoyed creating those very moments with you, right? Do not let making money cause you to be devoid of those quality moments and time, but allow those quality moments and time make space so that those quality moments and time exist, inshallah ta'ala. And remember, if your spouse's love language is quality time and you have not focused on that, then your spouse's love tank may be empty and you need to start filling that love tank up. She may not feel secure. Or he may not feel secure in your love. Remember that you have the ability to plan your life. And part of that planning is to include your spouse in your plans, right? And Dr. Chapman, he stated, he says, remember that a central aspect of quality time is togetherness, right? And this is not just in proximity. This isn't being in the same room together, in the same car together, in the same house together, but that rather togetherness has to do with focused attention on one another. Many people live together, but their hearts, their minds, and their souls are disconnected. They're not together. They may be together in this home, in this dwelling, but their hearts, minds, and souls are disconnected from one another, subhanAllah. And you don't want to be someone who is living with the person, but the reality is that your heart, mind, and soul is disconnected from that person. This is just two bodies, two beings in a household where really there is no love, the tank isn't being filled, and really you're just existing, right? You just don't want to exist with one another. You want to be part of each other's existence that you'll never ever forget, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and the love language of quality time also as the words of affirmation, right? And all of the other love languages that we're going to learn, they have many dialects, right? Meaning they have different forms that they can be, mashallah, applied and communicated with, inshallah, to, to your loved one. And one of the most common dialects is quality conversation. And this is when two individuals have sympathetic conversations where they share their experiences, where they share their thoughts, where they share their feelings and desires in a friendly and loving manner with uninterrupted context, right? So words of affirmation focused on what we personally were saying, right? I'm affirming you. And the words of affirmation, right? I'm affirming how hard you work for the family. I'm affirming, mashallah, how much my wife takes care of my children. I'm affirming how she takes care of the household. I'm affirming how the husband, mashallah, he goes out and he toils to bring home the wealth and to make sure that we have, mashallah, a roof over our head. I affirm these things by telling my spouse that, right? Honey, I love you and I appreciate you working hard. Honey, I appreciate all the time you take to cook for our families when I know it's difficult for you, right? Affirming, right? And this may be her love language or this may be his love language, inshallah ta'ala, right? But when it comes to <coughs> quality conversations, then this focus is more on what we are hearing, okay? It is allowing your spouse time to talk and for you to just listen without interrupting. Right, Dr. Chapman, he stated, he said, many of us are trained <laughs> to analyze problems and to find solutions, right? This is how we're trained, right? The mind is set that whenever a problem is presented to me, I have to figure that out, right? I, there has to be a solution and I have to figure out how to fix that, right? But we forget that marriage is a relationship between two individuals, right? And not a project to be completed. This isn't a work project right? Nor is it a problem to be solved. He says, so when our spouse begins to share their day or their experiences with us, it does not mean that they are necessarily seeking for us to give them an answer to their problems that they face during the day or for us to necessarily try to fix it. He says, in many instances, the spouse is simply looking to get something off of their chest, right? by sharing with you the emotions and the feelings that they are going through that they have inside of them and they're looking for you to listen 
They're looking for you to be sympathetic. They're looking for you to be supportive. And more importantly, they're looking for you to be present and mashallah attentive. Huh? Subhanallah. And he says, way too often we cut them off before they can even finish expressing to us what they wanted to express. And we commence to offer them solutions and we commence to offer them our, our, our opinions. He says, in that moment, you have just neglected the art of quality conversation, which is meant for you to listen more and speak less, right? SubhanAllah. And he goes to talk about, you know, a man and a wife where the wife comes home and she's like, honey, you know, I've had a difficult time at work and, you know, it's because of X and Y and Z and this happens to me, this happened to me. And immediately the husband jumps into giving her solutions on how she should manage the situation at work. He interrupts her, cuts her off, says, well, this is what you need to do, right? And then she comes back the next day and she said, honey, you know, I had a bad day at work and, you know, subhanAllah, it's the same person. And he goes again and tells her, well, you know, I told you yesterday, you need to do X, you need to do Y, you need to do Z. And then the third day she comes back and she's like, honey, you know, subhanAllah, the third day in a row, I have a bad day. And he says, don't talk to me about it. I don't want to talk to you about it anymore. I've been giving you solutions and telling you what to do, but you're not listening, <laughs> right? But she was looking for quality conversation, which meant allow her to speak and then just listen. She didn't want him to solve the problem. She wanted to express and get off her chest what she was feeling, the emotions she was having due to the situation she was facing at work, right? And he ruined it by interrupting, cutting her off, and then providing her with solutions that she didn't need. And then at the end, finally telling her, I don't want to communicate a dialogue with you anymore regarding this. So now she feels, because this may be her love language, that, you know, he doesn't love me. He doesn't want to listen to me. He doesn't. SubhanAllah, care about my feelings and my emotions, right? So we need to be very careful, you know, about doing this with our spouses, inshallah ta'ala, right? And of course, <laughs> this is difficult for many of us, right? Because of our makeup, the way we were created, right? The way some of us are, inshallah ta'ala, some of the way some of us were raised, right? But we should have a rule of thumb that we set in our house, right? Between our you and our between just you and your spouse, there should be a rule of thumb, right? And this is to let them know, honey, my love, habibi, habibi, habibti, you know, if you're expressing your feelings to me and for some reason, right, I cut you off, for some reason I interrupt, for some reason I start to offer a solution or try to fix the problem and that's not what you're seeking from me and really what you want is to be able to express to me emotionally what you're going through and what you're feeling inshallah ta'ala and I have neglected to understand that from you then please tell me, honey, I don't need you right now to, you know, uh, give me a solution or fix my problem. I just need you to listen to me. I just need you to support me, to be there for me emotionally, to be, mashallah, to have some empathy for what I'm going through, inshallah ta'ala, and just, just listen to me, right? And then for, for the spouse to say, okay, subhanAllah, I'm sorry, my love, you know, I apologize that I interrupted, I apologize that I cut in, I apologize that I read the situation wrong, inshallah ta'ala. And then you sit back and tell her, you know, go ahead, inshallah ta'ala, let me know what it is, you know, how was your day? Why do you feel that way? What's going on? And then begin to have that quality conversation and that quality moment with your spouse, inshallah ta'ala, right? Um, allow her to, mashallah, be able to, you know, unleash what it is that she or he, right? Because it can be either of the spouses are feeling and going through emotionally, inshallah ta'ala. And Dr. Chapman, he, he gives us a few points, you know, uh, on how to make um, successful marriages, right? Or how to have successful relationships, right? And the following points that he, he, he shared with us when it came to quality time and quality conversation and the likes is that number one, you should maintain eye contact when your spouse is talking to you, right? And that that will allow you to keep your mind from floating somewhere else. Right, because way too often, this is what we do. Our spouse is talking to us and we're like, okay, uh-huh. Oh yeah, oh, mashallah, yeah, that's nice, honey. You know, and, and we continue to do what we're doing on our device. And the reality is that we're not paying attention, right? We're not paying, we're paying attention to something else. And emotionally, that hurts, right? Emotionally, that may scar, right? Because now this person who is, you know, giving to you or trying to express to you something, you've 
you know, voided that situation out for them, you know, and the spouse that is having that voided out for them, you know, they should be able to express that to you in that moment, right? Don't let things mull over, right? And, and that's, that's, some, that's another very important point, right? If that's the way you feel like they neglected you at that moment or are neglecting you at that moment, don't let it pass, right? Because you don't want that to be something that continues to build and build and build and build. And then next thing you know, it brings severe problems into your relationship because you become unhappy, right? You're, you're, you're depressed, you're angry. And then at one moment, your bubble bursts because your love tank has been completely empty for years, right? You want to address the situation and nip it in the bud from the very beginning and, you know, express that, you know, you need, mashallah, for your husband to be there for you or your wife to be there for you in these types of moments. He says, number two, don't listen to your spouse while doing something else, right? So this is one, one and two are mixed together. Number three, he says, listen for feelings and key words, right? So while they're speaking, Listen for, for, for what they're emotionally telling you, how they feel, and for those keywords that they may use. And then ask yourself, what emotion is my wife or my husband experiencing at this moment? And then try to address that emotion by saying, it sounds to me that you may be disappointed because of X, Y, and Z. It sounds to me that you may be upset because of X, Y, and Z. You know, tell me a little bit more about that. Why do you feel that way? Why did that come about, right? And inshallah ta'ala, your spouse will see that you're addressing, mashallah, now of their emotional needs, inshallah ta'ala, and that you have realized what it is that they're going through and that this to them is a demonstration that you love them that you care, that you've taken out the time to now listen attentively enough that you're able to pick out those points within her dialogue or within his dialogue that demonstrates that you are listening. Huh? He says, number four, observe body language, right? He says, because body language is a powerful tool. Sometimes we express something with our mouths, but it is not necessarily true, right? We're not, we're, 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 we may be saying something with our mouths that we necessarily don't mean, but we're clenching our fists, you know, we, we, we're chewing on our jaw, you know what I mean? We may sh be shaking our heads, our knees may be shaking up and down, which may be giving us another different language, right? Okay, they may be upset. You know, something's, they're telling me they're okay, but the reality is mm, they're not okay. You know, there's something here that I need to address. And it's a skill to develop, right? It's something that you have to look for. You just can't say, well, okay, they told me they were okay, halas, and you move on, right? Because, and then, Later on in the future, and I've seen this happen in marriages, it's like, well, you know, you, you, you just ignore me, right? You, you, you don't understand me, you know what I mean? Well, you told me you was okay, honey. Well, I, I told you I was okay, but I really wasn't. And you didn't ask anymore. You didn't delve into the situation anymore. You just left it there and you walked away. Well, you know, what do you mean I walked away? You told me it was, you were okay, so that's why I walked away, right? And we see that this is where problems can occur, right? Because we see that the two are not understanding one another right? Or they're not seeking to understand each other, inshallah ta'ala. So we need to make sure that we're present of mind and that we're taking the time to understand one another, inshallah ta'ala. And body language is part of that. Number five, he says, refuse to interrupt your spouse when they're speaking, right? They say that the average individual only listens for 17 seconds. <laughs> Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. This is amazing. We only listen for 17 seconds before we interrupt and interject our own ideas into the conversation, right? SubhanAllah. That means our attention span is super short, right? Allahu Akbar. So it is a skill that we need to develop and say, okay, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen no matter how difficult it may be for you. But the more you work at it, like anything else in this life, the easier it will become inshallah ta'ala. He says, number six, let it be known, known to your spouse that your goal is to discover your spouse's feelings. Right? You wanna know how they feel inshallah ta'ala, emotionally, right? And what they're going through and that your objective is never to defend yourself or to fix the problem for them. But your goal is to understand them and support them wherever it is that they need support. And he went on to say that part of quality conversation is also learning to express yourself and, 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 and not only listen, right? So part of it is listening, inshallah ta'ala. And then part of it is learning to express yourself, right? Many of us don't know how to express ourselves, right? SubhanAllah. If you are one of those people or, or one of those dry people who don't know how to express or give off emotional cues, 
then it becomes difficult for your spouse to read and know how you feel and how to support you regarding how you feel, right? Dr. Chapman, he says that it is good to do exercises for yourself when you're outside the home. So he, he gave some examples. He says, when you're in the car and the person cuts you off, right, and you get upset, you ask yourself, how did that just make me feel right now? I'm angry, right? SubhanAllah, I want to jump out the car, right? That when you do these types of exercises for yourself throughout the day, inshallah ta'ala, you by yourself, and then when you get home, you try to do some of that with your spouse, that then you begin to develop, mashallah, that skill of how to express your emotions, right? SubhanAllah. And, 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 and he says that we need to remember that many of us as parents, right, don't, don't, we don't let our children express themselves, right? We shut them down immediately. Right, and, and I, I can tell you I'm guilty of this. SubhanAllah, when I read this, I'm like, Abu Sumeya, you're guilty, right? The child comes to express themselves and you shut them down before they can even communicate what it is because you think you know what they want and you shut them down and don't let them communicate themselves, C communicate what they want to, 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 to you, inshallah. And whatever, and, and we, uh, the more we do this, we are creating a culture and a habit within our children and perhaps Many of us are that way because that was the culture and the habit and the home that we ourselves grew up in. And now we're just giving off back to our children, back to our spouses, what we were raised with, right? SubhanAllah. And, 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 and this is because we may not be emotionally in touch with our own selves due to those things that we grew up with in our lives, right? In many instances, we are scarred because of the way we were raised, the relationships we have been in, and much more. And because of that, those scars become apparent. And sometimes even we are inflicting those scars upon our spouses as well. Why? Because we're, inflict we're taking that behavior that we ourselves received and we were victims of, and then now we're making our spouses and our children victim of that same behavior, inshallah ta'ala, and perhaps it wasn't great upbringing. Perhaps our parents didn't know no better. Perhaps our grandparents didn't know no better because some of us were raised by our grandparents, right? SubhanAllah, right? And SubhanAllah, sometimes we have to realize that it may not be on purpose that our spouse reacts in that way or doesn't react emotionally at all, but that was something that they were raised with SubhanAllah, or something that they experienced in their lives that emotionally scarred them and caused them to be a person who shuts down and doesn't express emotion, right? And then now we have to figure out how we can gain their trust and how we can open them up so that inshallah ta'ala, we can begin to help them heal those wounds that they've had for so many years, Allahu Akbar, right? And we need to also, us personally, you know, just to be careful that we're not inflicting our past wounds or taking our past wounds and inflicting that and hurting our spouse with that as well, right? So expressing to them how we feel and why we feel that way is important for the growth of your marriage and relationship. And, and again, it is something that we have to learn. It's learned behavior. And sometimes it's, it's unlearning what you've already learned so that you, inshallah ta'ala, can learn how to maneuver with ways that are completely healthy, inshallah ta'ala, and not detrimental or not damaging to your spouse, inshallah. So expressing your emotions, my brothers and sisters, especially for my brothers, right? Expressing your emotions is not a sign of weakness, even though many of us men, we look at it as a sign of weakness. Some women, because of what they've been through in past relationships, also look at it as a sign of weakness, right? And it doesn't make the man any less of a man. It doesn't make the woman any less of a woman. Rather, it makes us a better man. It makes us a better woman. It makes us a better husband. It makes us a better father. It makes us a better human being altogether. And Dr. Chapman, he stated that our thoughts and emotions are what eventually drive our decision-making, right? SubhanAllah. So the way we think and the way we emotionally process things, this is what drives us to make decisions. And sometimes if we have that negativity and those scars and that pain that has been inflicted upon us, sometimes we make decisions that are wrong and incorrect because of those experiences that we had, subhanAllah. And because of this, sometimes we need to ask for help, right? Because, and it's understandable, some, especially those who have been hurt in the past, you don't want to hurt again. 
right? You don't want to be a victim again. You don't want to open yourself up, inshallah ta'ala, and then feel like you're being taken advantage of all over again. But we need to be people who take a chance. Why? Because the chance is not only for the spouse that you're with, but the chance is giving yourself a chance. The chance is allowing you to heal. The chance is allowing you to get feel to, to, to have happiness and joy in your life once again as well, right? And you deserve that. You absolutely deserve that. And God, Allah, He wants that for you as well, inshallah ta'ala, right? So all of that unhealthy dialogue, all of the screaming, all of the arguing, all of the of the fighting, that leads to failure in our marriages and in our relationships, inshallah ta'ala. So we need to unlearn those processes inshallah ta'ala and be people who implement stuff that will be much more healthy so he says that not all of us are in touch with our emotions right as we mentioned but when it comes to talking all of us are affected by our personality the way we talk the way we speak the way the way we convey ourselves right and he says that he's observed two personality types the dead sea and the babbling brook so he says the Dead Sea is the person who always receives, like the Dead Sea, right? The literal Dead Sea overseas, always receives, but never gives anything back, right? And he says this personality type receives many experiences throughout the day. They have a large reservoir that they store with information, and they are perfectly happy never speaking about it, right? So when you ask that person, what's wrong? What was your day about? Why aren't, they, why aren't you talking tonight? They'll probably ask you, nothing's wrong. I'm okay. You know what I mean? You know, this person is not used to giving feedback, right? And they're not used to sharing their feelings. They are used to sucking it all up and moving on, subhanAllah. And this gives them strength, but at the same time, it makes them extremely weak, right? And then he says the babbling brook is the personality or the person, right? That personality type of, uh, where a person, whatever enters the eyes, whatever enters the ears, immediately comes out of the mouth, right? That 60 seconds don't pass, except that they're like, yo, I got a call to my sister, brother, you, you don't even know what happened, right? He calls that the babbling brook, subhanAllah. And he says so much so that even when they don't have someone to convey it to, they'll, they're, they're, they're such a babbling brook that they'll even say it to themselves and talk to themselves because they got to just get it out, right? So you have these two types of personalities, subhanAllah, right? And then another, another dialect under this love language is called quality activities. And he says, this includes doing things that both of you like, right? The emphasis is not on what you're doing. Listen up. The emphasis is not on what you're doing, but more so on why you are doing it. The purpose is to experience something together, okay? And to walk away from it feeling that my spouse cares and loves me. My spouse is willing to do something with me that I enjoy, and that is love for some people, brothers and sisters, right? That is an expression of love, and sometimes it is the loudest form of love that can be expressed to a person whose love language is just that. And he says that Dr. Chapman mentions that the essential ingredients in a quality activity are that at least one of you wants to do it. The other is willing to do it. And then the third, that both of you know why you are doing it and that the purpose is to express love to one another, right? So it's not about, ah, I don't like doing that. I don't want to do that. It's about, that's what you like to do. Let's go out and do that tonight, honey, inshallah. Ta'ala. And you take turns. Sometimes they're going to do something that you like and they may not like, right? But you are expressing that love back and forth for one another. He also states that one of the byproducts of this activity is that they provide, which is important, a memory bank from which you will draw from in the years ahead, right? They will always remember these unforgettable moments that you have created with them, right? SubhanAllah, those, those are memories of love, especially for those people whose primary language of love is quality time. Some people may ask, you know, how do we get to that point of having that type of quality time, right? Because we have to remember, inshallah ta'ala, we want to create those moments. We talked about Aisha. We want to, the day that my spouse passes away, Allah preserve her, or the day that I pass away, Allah preserve me, right? Uh, that, you know, subhanAllah, you want them to be able to 
not have you on this earth, but to subhanAllah be able to remember those moments, right? The moments that we talked in this place, the moment when we walked over here. I can remember the day, you know, when he did X and Y and Z. I can remember the day when he, you know, was so silly and he made this joke or she made this joke, subhanAllah. And all of those things bring them happiness, right? Because they were able to share in those moments that created such beautiful memories. And this is why people take pictures, right? Pictures ultimately is that thing that allows us to remember moments, right? SubhanAllah, look at that day we were on the beach together. SubhanAllah, I remember that moment we were playing, we were doing X, we were doing Y, we were doing Z, right? These are the things that we want to create with one another, inshallah ta'ala. And how do we create it, right? Because some people are asking, you know, I don't have time. <laughs> I'm working constantly, the kids, the house, the this, the that. Dr. Chapman says, you just have to make it happen. You just have to make it happen. You have to find the babysitter. You have to take a day off, maybe while the children are at work, inshallah ta'ala. Both of you take a sick day, inshallah ta'ala, and go and enjoy that day together, inshallah, right? While the kids are in school. Go for a stroll while the kids are asleep, you know, maybe early in the morning before Fajr, inshallah ta'ala. You know, if you have elderly kid, older kids who can take care of the little ones in the house, go for a stroll together, inshallah ta'ala. Go see the sunset together, inshallah ta'ala. Find a way to have some type of alone time, inshallah. Remember the days you spent Right. Remember the days you spent. Um, remember the days that you had spent hours on the phone before you guys got married. Right. You were you used to talk to each other all the time. Right. Hours looking into each other's eyes, just staring into each other's eyes. You know, while you talk, you know, subhanAllah and you laugh and you can see the the expression of love on each other's faces right the hours that you laugh together joking with one another inshallah ta'ala the hours of basking in each other's love right subhanallah that was the very thing that caused you to get married together subhanallah remember those moments recreate those moments rekindle those moments inshallah ta'ala as those moments were not meant to be lost brothers and sisters those moments were not meant to be lost nor were those moments only for the beginning of your marriage right or those moments weren't only for the time period when you were getting to one know one another to drive the person to love you and for you to love them and for them to ask for your hand in marriage and for you to accept but those moments were moments that were meant to be lived out consistently in both of your lives right subhanallah right so don't allow them to be lost a healthy marriage right needs this 25 years later right a healthy marriage still needs these things 25 years later just as much as it needed it the first week you met the first month that you talked right and anytime thereafter lastly brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala in closing dr chapman he gave us a few more points to understand what quality time is he says number one Again, taking a walk through the neighborhood, your old neighborhood, maybe, you know, talking to your spouse about, you know, your, 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 your childhood in that neighborhood, inshallah ta'ala, sharing with the moments, right, subhanAllah, that are special to you. He's saying, go for a bike ride together, ride the bike until you are tired and exhausted, enjoy the scenery that you, mashallah, are seeing as you're riding the bike along the way. He says, number three, and this one was quite interesting for me, subhanAllah, because it's connected to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallam in some way, right? He says, make a lunch appointment with your wife and visit the cemetery, right? Some people want to say, visit the cemetery. He says, yes, visit the cemetery together and thank Allah, thank God that you both are still alive and in each other's lives and that you both are still trying to work to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, right? SubhanAllah, the Prophet said, remember much, right? The destroyer of pleasures, death, right? He says, you know, I used to forbid you from going to the graves. Now I allow you to go to the graves, inshallah ta'ala, as it is a reminder for you, right? It reminds you of where you're going to be at and where you're going to go, right? This is a relationship that's on the next level, subhanAllah, especially in terms of faith, Allahu Akbar. It seems kind of weird and odd, but subhanAllah, it is something that is needed, right? Because we both sitting there, we don't know when we're going to die. All of those people in there, that was somebody's wife, that was somebody's husband, that was somebody's child, right? That was somebody's family member, subhanAllah. That could have been me, that could have been you. Let's appreciate the time we have together. He says, number four, ask your spouse for a list of activities that they would like to do and for them to share one with you and then begin to carry those activities out. He says, number five, ask your spouse where they enjoy sitting and talking, right? And then maybe on the way home from work one day, call her or call him and say, listen, I want to meet you at that spot that you like. And then just sit there for an hour with them, inshallah ta'ala, and enjoy a conversation with them, inshallah ta'ala, and enjoy time with them in that spot that they love to go to. Number six, think of an activity that your spouse loves to do, 
but that you may have little interest in and go out and do that activity because that is, that is an expression of your love. He says, number seven, plan a getaway weekend for the two of you. Call the grandparents. Listen, I need you to take care of the kids, inshallah ta'ala, this weekend. Make it romantic. Make it exciting. Make it completely unforgettable, inshallah ta'ala. And set these things up, you know, every now and then for you and your spouse. Number eight, he says, if you have a fireplace at home, you know, go get the blankets, throw the blankets out in front of the fireplace turn on the fireplace, maybe the children are not home that night, maybe they went with the grandparents, you know what I mean, in the lights, or by family members, house, inshallah ta'ala, get the popcorn, get the soda, get the juice, whatever it is that you want, inshallah ta'ala, the halal, you know, uh, bubbly, inshallah ta'ala, that has no alcohol in it, right, and mashallah, sit there and talk with one another, like you used to do in the beginning of your marriage, inshallah ta'ala, until you become too tired, until the floor becomes harder, he says, and then you go up to the bedroom and relax in the room, inshallah ta'ala, but that those moments will be unforgettable moments for you guys, right? So I end, brothers and sisters, by reminding you that our prophet practiced quality time, and it is from his sunnah, and we as well should practice having quality time with our spouses while creating unforgettable moments that will reside in our hearts, minds, and souls until the day we die. Remember, you can do it, okay? All it takes is intention, sincerity, love, and more importantly, implementation, inshallah ta'ala. Remember, life is short, right? And it can all be over in the blink of an eye. Make the most of each other's company while Allah has kept you together in each other's company. And may Allah give us a long, fruitful, give us long, fruitful marriages full of love for one another and full of iman, belief, and our Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, inshallah ta'ala. With that, brothers and sisters, I'll open up the floor. If there are any questions, comments, inshallah ta'ala, corrections, whatever it may be um, that you have on your mind at this moment, feel free to share it by unmiking yourself or unmuting yourself, should I say. Or you can place it in the chat publicly here on uh, Zoom, or you can also send it to me privately or for those who are watching us online on Facebook as well, you can also place your comments or your questions there as well. Bismillah. So here, I'm looking at the comments. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I said the day belongs to the woman. I'm sorry. The night belongs to the woman. The day belongs to the man. Uh, thanks for the correction. Um, when you're in multiple marriages, uh, as the prophecy of was, then the night belongs to the woman. It's her night that night. The day belongs to the man. But what I meant was that the prophet sallallahu throughout his day, and thank you for the correction, slip of the tongue, that throughout his day, he would go and visit his spouses, inshallah ta'ala, his wives, and he would create moments and quality, he would create quality time and quality moments with them, inshallah ta'ala. And this is something that we know from his sunnah, right? That even though the day was his, where he was busy at work with the community, with the society, that he still took time out of that busy schedule to go be with them, inshallah ta'ala, and create those moments. So again, Jazakallah khair for correcting the slip of the tongue there, inshallah ta'ala. The night belongs to her, the day belongs to him, but he created quality moments during that time. Jazakallah khair for that, alhamdulillah. Um, there is, uh, I think we have some new people with us here, inshallah ta'ala. So we're going to put up a form, um, inshallah, for everyone that's here. Feel free to fill it out, please. This allows us to help, uh, you know, get to know who you are, your needs, inshallah ta'ala, and to be able to reach out to you, inshallah ta'ala, and have you connect with us, inshallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi to everyone, and wa iyak, um, to those who have said jazakallahu khayran, inshallah. And may Allah bless you all as well. Um, can you post some of the things the Prophet said, etc., in the group? Um, in terms of uh, which things, inshallah ta'ala, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, said, inshallah. Um, or, or are you speaking, Amber, about the moments um, that I was talking about in terms of him being with Aisha radiallahu anha, racing? Um, with him allowing her to watch um, during uh, the uh, during the when the Abyssinians were sword playing in the masjid, are you talking about those specific specific moments itself?
and again, the, the session isn't catered to people who are married, right? And, and that's a misnomer or misconception. Or, and if you have that idea, it's the wrong idea, right? Um, someone sent me a private message saying it seems to be catered to married people. This is not catered to married people, right? All of the dialogue that is happening today that we talked about spending quality time, right? If you learn these things before marriage, then that means that when you get into a marriage, inshallah ta'ala, you can begin implementing these things in your life, inshallah ta'ala, and begin to try to have a successful marriage from the very beginning, right? Many of us have not learned this until 20, 25 years later in our marriages, inshallah ta'ala, even though we're talking about spending quality time and you are not yet married, right? You're taking all of these concepts, right? All of these teachings that we talked about today, you're putting them in your brain, inshallah ta'ala, right? You're writing them down in your notebook, inshallah, so that when you are married, inshallah ta'ala, or when you begin to seek out a person for marriage, inshallah ta'ala, that you have all of these concepts in the back of your mind of learning what their love language is, learning what quality time is, learning what quality activity is, learning what quality conversation is, learning that sometimes you need to just be quiet and learn to listen and not so much speak, learning that you have to learn how to emotionally express yourself, right? So it's not just for married people, right? It is for everyone, inshallah ta'ala. And the wise person is the one whom, inshallah, is able to take successful marriages that have already occurred and have already, mashallah, been tested and have been implementing these concepts in, the, in their lives and they have successful marriages because of that, that you take those ideas and those concepts, inshallah ta'ala, so that when you get married, inshallah ta'ala, you can also implement them in your life, inshallah. And of course, many of these things, um, again, as uh, I was sent the, another uh, direct comment, uh, alhamdulillah, um, can be implemented with our children as we talked about that section with our children and allowing them to come, you know, communicate, allowing them to emotionally express themselves as well. And remember that all of these things, you know, when you apply them with your children, inshallah ta'ala, you are mashallah teaching your children how to live and how to be a spouse because you are their first teacher, right? <laughs> they're in your home watching you, right? And either they're learning great concepts or they're learning how to be a horrible spouse, right? SubhanAllah. And that's the reality, right? It, we, 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 we learn things through visualization, through experience, and then we end up implementing and applying them in our lives as well, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, a private message came in and says, how do you decide if the activity they want to spend their quality time doing is a little distracting from each other? Can you uh, be a little bit more specific? How do you decide if the activity they want to spend their quality time uh, is uh, a little distracting from each other. Okay, so um, again, it's, you know, you, you may be looking at, again, you're asking them what it is that they want to do, right? So if that may be, you know, something that they, they, they want to do, inshallah ta'ala, as part of that quality time, um, you know, they say, I want to do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, and then inshallah ta'ala, you carrying that out, right, is pleasing uh, or, or showing them an act of, I love you or I care for you, inshallah ta'ala. And this is why I'm doing this with you because I know that it is something that you enjoy, inshallah ta'ala, right? And then you take other moments, inshallah ta'ala, um, where you can also spend quality time sitting down and talking with one another, inshallah ta'ala, and developing those things as well, inshallah ta'ala. So again, you know, just a, a very, finding a very balanced approach, right? It doesn't just have to be all one way right? But finding a balanced approach, right? So when I gave the example of TV, for, for instance, it doesn't mean that now, because I said TV is not quality time, that you, you know, you, you, that you're going to say, okay, honey, tonight, we're getting rid of the TV, khalas, right? <laughs> right? And again, we're not talking about the halal, the haram, and about the eyes of what they see, right? But that inshallah, ta, you know that there's a time for this and there's a time for that. Maybe you and your spouse have decided together that, you know, we want to go ahead and sit down and watch this movie together, inshallah ta'ala, and spend some time that way, right? But then inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow, we're going to spend some time in the park talking with one another. The next day, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to cook together. The day after that, inshallah ta'ala, you know, we're gonna go out and watch the sunset together, right? So it's about diversifying your, your relationship with these different things, inshallah ta'ala, so that you're implementing different things. And this is why you do that activity of asking each other, and then, you know, one day you do what she likes, one day you do what he likes, inshallah. And then, mashallah, you go carrying out and doing those things that you have listed, inshallah, because you know that those are things that you both enjoy, inshallah. 
and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Any other questions? Okay, so it seems like, mashallah, um, this lesson seems to be clear. Not too many questions today, inshallah ta'ala. So we hope that um, everyone has benefited from this lesson, inshallah. And I ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to allow us to, mashallah, always implement the best of what we learn, inshallah ta'ala, and to help us change whatever it is um, that we don't know or that we have been um, neglecting in our lives and, and not implementing, inshallah ta'ala, so that we can have successful marriages. Um, there's another question came in. Is there a point that can be considered as spending too much time together? No, right? Um, there's no point of spending too much time together, especially for spouses that are married, inshallah ta'ala. Um, you know, when you get married, you know, you, you, you know, you've married each other and you, you're going to be, be together. But of course, you know, um, there's, there, I wouldn't call it because they, they also say because everyone needs their personal time or space, right? Personal time too. I wouldn't call it personal time or space, right? Because now you're talking about having family. But yes, um, there should be a time when maybe the brothers go out and the brother, the, the husband may go out and hang out with some friends, right? Or the sister may go out and hang out with some friends, inshallah ta'ala. And this is, you know, uh, alhamdulillah, something that, you know, kills that always being with each other, you know, I mean, like this consistently, inshallah ta'ala. But in that same sense, or in the same, in the same sentence, inshallah ta'ala, there are relationships that put their friends first. And because of that, their marriages are destroyed, right? Their marriages are destroyed because really it isn't about your friends, right? When, once you get married, it isn't about your friends and it isn't about my personal time and my personal space, especially when you have kids, it becomes difficult, right? So I'm to have personal time and personal space because everybody wants something from you, right? And this is a part of being an adult, right? This is when you become an adult that, you know, subhanAllah, you're dealing with all of these things under the sun and you're learning to manage all of these things under the sun, inshallah ta'ala. So it's not just like, I'm gonna, you know, go upstairs and, you know, y'all gonna, you know, I need, you gotta give me two hours of just personal space. But yes, you know, in marriage, inshallah, sometimes you don't want to, um, um, you know, um, what's the correct word I'm looking for here? Um, you don't want to just hover over each other 24 hours a day, right? <laughs> inshallah ta'ala. But you give the, you know, the person, you know, the wife may be doing something in the house, the husband may be doing something else, inshallah ta'ala. Also with our brothers who love to game, right? Love gaming and stuff like that. Don't spend your day gaming, inshallah ta'ala, while the wife, right? This is worse than watching TV in some instances, while the wife is just doing something else. And it's like, you know, this dude, all he does is play video games all damn day, right? Um, you know, there has to be a balance to those things. Yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm pretty sure no, any wife won't mind mind half hour one hour you're gonna go ahead and dedicate that to playing a game or you're gonna dedicate that to doing something you know beneficial in the house learning reading the quran or something else inshallah ta'ala that you know having those personal moments in that personal space is fine inshallah ta'ala but know that you know once you become an adult and you have family and you get married right this is adulthood that you know time um now you, you know you, you are giving time to many people on many different levels inshallah ta'ala and after you know every now and then you'll get your breather by going out and doing some things inshallah um, so, and then, uh, as sister Amber, she said her question in terms of, then she said here, the things about what to do, if I'm understanding you correct, sister Amber, um, if you're talking about what to do in our, in, in our relationships and, and in our marriages, inshallah ta'ala. Um, one of the things that we have done um, is that we share, um, we, we, we've been trying to be a little consistent with it. It's been a little difficult, a little difficult, but alhamdulillah, we've been pretty consistent with it, is that we share reminders. And then the reminders that we share um, either daily in the groups, um, you know, for we try to create them 30 days at a time. So it's, it's shared, you know, for a month. Um, usually they're going to come from these teachings that we have in the class, inshallah ta'ala. So he's, he's going to talk about, you know, what the Quran says about marriage, what the Prophet ﷺ said, inshallah ta'ala. And perhaps um, what we can do is reshare some of those with you, inshallah ta'ala, that were put out in the past. And we should have some more coming out um, in the future as well, 
um, that would be based off of the classes and things that the Prophet ﷺ did. So yes, inshallah, ta'ala, we'll, we'll try to uh, you know share those things with you, inshallah, um, Sister Amber and other than you, uh, if you know, with everyone in the group, inshallah. Afwan, Sister Afwan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Um, wa alaikum salam to uh, the sister who gave her salams online. So khayr, inshallah ta'ala. So if that's it for the questions, inshallah ta'ala, um, we've reached our eight o'clock uh, time limit, inshallah ta'ala. I don't want to extend um, past that. I want to respect everybody's time and your time with your families. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Always feel free if you have any questions, doubts or whatever have you um, outside of uh, the class time, you can always email us at reverts reconnect at mass new york org or you can email me at uh, imam wesley at mass new york org as well alhamdulillah any of those two will work they, they it comes back to me and i see them and inshallah ta'ala we can deal with your questions then um also we have on wednesdays i want to remind everybody that on wednesdays usually between five and seven before the start time of this class we have a hotline or soft line, whichever you want to call it, where people can call in, inshallah ta'ala, to discuss whatever issues they may be going through or whatever, you know, seek advice or, you know what I mean, whatever it is that they may need, inshallah ta'ala, from us, you can use that hotline to call on that day. Um, and, and, and if you don't have it, you know, you can, you know, the sisters can uh, direct message my wife um, through the app, through the, through the group, or inshallah ta'ala, again, you can email reverts reconnect um, at, at massnewyork.org or email wesley at massnewyork.org and we can share that with you inshallah ta'ala. I um, mean, you can use those resources as well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And inshallah ta'ala, we want to remind everybody as well, we have every morning from 7.30 to 8, using the same link, we read the Quran together in the English language, inshallah, for a half hour. Um, alhamdulillah, we've, you know, going, we're finishing our third round of the Quran. And tomorrow night, we have in the footsteps of the Prophet, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we ask you to join us for that as well. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.